Baco came into my life in 1957, Christmas 1957. I probably had set one to start off with. I think what I liked about it is not only can you build that little house, but you can build other things, a railway side in, a small shed. So it was quite versatile. But like a lot of things, it uh, probably ends up getting broken. And then in the big tidy up session, boys don't need these toys when you're growing up, gets thrown away. But I rediscovered it um, on a trip to York. There's a toy museum there and my eyes lit up when I spotted it in the cabinet. Um, and as soon as I got home, straight onto eBay to see if I can capture my childhood. Set one was there, set two was there. So I went straight for set two. The box that set two came in was a bit rough, so I quickly threw that away. I had this little metal case and I put all the parts in there, but they were still rattling around. So I then made some small boxes to keep all the component parts separate. Um, I was quite pleased with it and I thought that's where it was going to finish. Not really when you get into Baco you start buying more and more so that quickly became useless and I had to build bigger boxes. I came across this advert, it's from the late 1950s. Um, the set I had was Baco set number one which was 21 shillings and I know at the time we were renting a cottage and the cottage was seven and sixpence a week. So it was more than twice what we were paying for the cottage. So it would have been an expensive toy. Keep buying extras through eBay and they come up with more and more instruction manuals. But they all seem to have suffered the same with the ravages of time and that is people have repaired them more often than not with sellotape. The only problem with sellotape is that you're left with a sticky residue when the paper at the sellotape itself breaks down. Before you start building something, familiarise yourself with all the component parts because all the parts have actually got code. So when you come to use the basic plan and layout, every component part is just a code. It's so you must familiarise yourself with that. The other one I find confusing is the length of the different rods. You need various rods for different heights of the buildings you're using. Right, let's start with the basics. What you're going to need is your base plates to start off with. And depending on the size of the building you're going to put up, you may need one, you may need eight of these fixing together. And all they attach is this small bracket here. I don't know if you can see that. That small bracket goes on the back with the indentation facing downwards, and then you screw them in, um, as in true blue Peter fashion. Here's one I made earlier. I'll give you a tip with these, when you're sticking them together, don't tighten them up too much because if you've got probably four in a row, you'll find that they'll start to bend um, and this is easy enough stuff to break. Just slacken them off a bit and it will flatten down. Right, so the next thing is to do is to sort out how many rods we need to create the building. Um, looking at it, I think it's what I would call internal scaffolding. Let's quickly have a look at the building rods. Now, obviously with time, what happens to these is they get bent. And if you're building a reasonable sized building, you, the last thing you want is a bent rod. Um, I don't know if you can see that as I'm moving it around, it's slightly twisted at the end. Um, somebody before on a building twisted and pulled it when it goes. An easy thing to do is if your rod runs safely across, they are easy runs like that, then you know that's pretty straight. If you've got one that's slightly bent, then when you come to roll it, it doesn't move. It's just dead. Don't build with that one. Right, let's start a, a small building or a section of a small building. Okay, you'll find that corners have three sections, three rods on one side and one rod there. So I'm missing out the rod in between. We'll see why. So this is a typical building brick, straightforward. That's going to go down between those two. Now the corner one has a little lip on it and it allows you, when you put this one in here, look, there you go, then that's quite a neat little corner we've made. The buildings mostly are, are one layer of red bricks 
and then two or three layers of white bricks because it looks like white rendering. So there's another one on. This is a corner one. That's going the same. That's actually gone on upside down. <laughs> let's go. Let's do it right. So that's gone on there. And the same here. One more. And this is probably about the same size you would have for a garage. There we go. So we've got three on there. Remember I said about these rods, if they're slightly twisted, one of the things you can do when you get to a certain level is to put on one of these corner brackets. I've made all my own little boxes, so they don't resemble anything you would have got from Baco, but it works for me. Let's have a look. So these little corners are almost like, I presume, flat scaffolding or very thin steel beams. So that clips on there and clips on and brings it all together and stops these rods from splaying apart. You do get them on a double story building. One complete story is another sheet of Bakelite but it actually brings all the rods and holds them together. You'll see as we progress through the building. So as the building progresses, you'll need to put various things in. Let's, let's put in a door. Um, I love what they've done to these doors here. If you look at it one side, that is a typical sort of 1960s onwards door. But if we turn it round, then you're talking with the panes of glass in there. That would be a 1930s door. Um, the bricks on the top, you've got a half brick and then that's your first floor. But same sort of thing, if you're going to put a window in, then all you need is a set of bricks at the bottom, bringing it half there, and then you put your window in, and then row of bricks on top. Fairly simple, really, but you very quickly can see that you're creating a building. I've tried to keep it looking something like the original Baco sets, but all my paper leaflets like this were always ripped to tatters by the time I've got hold of them. So this gives you an idea what's in the envelope. Um, I've got seven by seven holes, 15 by six holes. This is what you would have in a typical set one, set two. They're just thin Bakelite sheets and these hold the floors together. So as you're going up through the building and your rods start to splay, this will draw your rods back together. Very simple, but very effective. When I think that I started off with just that little box that I built, set number one, um, I've bought quite a bit of Baco since. Um, God bless eBay. Right, let's have a look. Um, I've put uh, most of my component parts in little boxes that I created myself, but to be true to Baco, I've kept their sort of logo on things. Half bricks, red bricks, here we go. So they're all stored neatly to get hold of. I'd like to think that this will lean on and probably what Baco may have built if they'd have still carried on to the 1990s. Because I didn't want the instruction manuals to get knocked about, um, I even created a section in the back so that they go in and there's a little cut in there so it's easy enough to take out. Well there you have it, we've just started with Baco. So if you want to see more, subscribe. Next video, we'll start to build some buildings. No, it's not as bad as that really. It will get better. See you soon. Keep smiling.